Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Conservation in the Classroom, where you get to chat with one of our very own conservation experts here at WWF. My name is Kate. I will be your host today. And before we dive in and I introduce our awesome presenter, I want to give a huge shout out to the six different classes that we have joining us on camera today from all over the country. So when I say your group's name, make sure to make some noise and wave and let us know that you're there. So let's start with Miss Metzger's group from Pepper Pike, Ohio. Can you guys hear us? I think it might have been a little bit delayed there. We'll come back to you guys. Um, next up, we have Miss Mitchell's class from New Bedford, Massachusetts. Hello. From Madam Morris, Pennsylvania, we have Mrs. Kudrick's class. <laughs> Next up is Miss Tai Shu's class from Cincinnati, Ohio. What's up, everybody? <laughs> awesome. Um, let's see. From Beaufort, South Carolina, we have Miss Madden's class. That was, that was awesome. Um, and then last but not least, we have the Helping Ninjas from Carmel, Indiana. Very good. Um, in case, let's go back um, to those first two classes that we didn't quite get. Um, Miss Mitchell's class from New Bedford, we want to give you guys the chance to be on camera again since I don't think we got you the first time. Can you make some noise again? Let us know that you're there. Perfect. And Miss Metzger from Pe Pepper Pike, Ohio. <laughs> okay, now we definitely know you guys are there. That was awesome. <laughs> So for those of you that are watching live but are not on camera, feel free to give yourselves a shout out using the chat function. And that is also gonna be how you drop your questions for our presenter when we get to the Q&A later in the presentation. So the reason you guys are all here today is to hear from our awesome presenter. Her name is Giovanna Grind. She is a program officer with our wildlife conservation team here at WWF. Gia works with large internet companies to help stop the illegal trade of species like elephants, tigers, and pangolins. Illegal trade is one of the biggest threats that are facing these animals. So today, Gia is gonna to talk to us about what she's doing to try to help make the internet, the internet a safer place um, for these species, what exactly is illegal wildlife trade, and what you guys can do to help. So Gia, thank you so much for joining us. Without further ado, if you want to take it away and share your screen, the floor is yours. Great. All right, thank you so much, Kate. I hope everyone can see my screen. See. Good morning and good afternoon. A special shout out uh, to our friends in Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and South Carolina for joining us on the feed. Um, and a big hello to all of you joining us across the web today. Thank you for tuning in to learn about illegal wildlife trade and how you and all of your friends can help us stop it. So my name is Giovanna Grein and I'm a program officer with WWF. And today we're going to dive into what it means to say something is illegally traded online. Um, and how elephants, pangolins, tigers, and all of your other favorite species from across the world are facing extinction because of this threat. Um, and most importantly, we want to hear from you all or tell you all how you can help us uh, reduce wildlife trafficking online. Um, so I first want to tell you a little bit more about me and how I got started in my work here at WWF. Um, before I started, I went to school to study environmental science because I wanted to be like all of your really cool teachers that signed you up for this live stream today. Um, I always loved being outside and I've always loved wildlife. So I wanted a career where I could work with wildlife uh, and share this love with students, kind of like we're doing today. I got to do some really cool jobs in college, um, including one where I swam with a giant sea turtle that only had three flippers. Um, I developed a lesson plan for science so you could learn how uh, climate change was affecting coral reefs in Australia. 
Um, and I traveled to Costa Rica where I slept next to monkeys that sounded a lot like dinosaurs. Um, and I got to visit a sloth rehabilitation center, which you can see on the lower image here on your screen. Uh, and one of my craziest adventures before I started, uh, I was doing a tree planting on a dairy farm locally in West Virginia. Uh, and I was chased by a dairy cow all the way to the end of the fence, shocked by an electric fence while I tried to get away from the cow. Um, so a lot of fun stories in, in conservation work before I started at WWF. Um, and the more that I traveled uh, and the more I did these different jobs, I learned that I wanted to take my passion for environmental science and combine it with business to make change at a really big global level. Um, so I went to business school um, and then found that the two uh, backgrounds in business and environmental science worked really well here at WWF. Um, so I've been here for six years now, um, first starting out as an assistant and then kind of working my way into some of the projects I will talk to you about today. Um, one thing I really love about this job is that I'm able to do so much uh, for species globally right here from our office in Washington, DC. So I've been really fortunate through this job uh, to be able to travel to some really cool places around the world, uh, including this one here, which is in Thailand, uh, a place in Asia, and the park is called Kuiburi National Park. And we had been driving around um, all morning hoping to see some elephants and happened to turn behind us when we saw this whole family um, just wandering right along the path behind us. Um, and a fun fact, if you're trying to find elephants in this park, if you just follow a crazy rooster, when it turns off a path, that will lead to some elephants for you. Um, and so kind of bringing it back to being able to work with these really cool elephants that are all the way on the other side of the world, um, right here from Washington, DC, I work on an issue called illegal wildlife trade. So what does this mean if we kind of break it apart? If something's illegal, it means that there's a law saying that you can't do it. So something you all might understand, you have to wear your seatbelt when you're in the car because there's a law saying you have to do it. And if you don't do it, it's illegal. And so when we're talking about wildlife trade, if something's being traded illegally, it means the animal's protected under law, either globally um, or locally, like here in the US, and you're not allowed to trade that species. <clears throat> Um, so unfortunately, a lot of people like to buy either live exotic animals um, or their parts, uh, products that were made from their parts, um, even if those species are protected by law. So then that's where it becomes illegal wildlife trade. And so this doesn't include cats or dogs or some of the species you might have at home like a hamster. We're talking the really big ones like tigers and elephants and rhinos. And this threat is threatening a lot of animals around the world. Did you know that there are more tigers living in the United States as pets than there are in the wild in the entire world? So we're talking your friend might next, next door might have a tiger cub that you didn't even know about. Uh, and there are more of them here in your own backyard than there are in Asia where we just saw those elephants. And how many of you have heard about this guy? He's called a pangolin. Uh, there are four species that live in Asia and four that live in Africa. And they're one of the most traded species around the world. Um, in the last uh, 10 years, so pretty much as long as you all have been alive, there have been a million of them traded through the illegal wildlife trade. And did you know that there are a lot of people that really like to eat sea turtle eggs as part of the trade, which is pretty gross. And we're not just talking about products um, that come from animals, but also these live animal trade, live animals that are traded. So it might seem like a great idea to get a really cool exotic pet, uh, but then you have the issue of an alligator that's too big to fit in your bathtub, uh, a tiger cub that's eating everything in your house, or a giant macaw like this one here that won't stop pooping on your head on the way to school. So looking at a specific species, if you see these elephants here on your screen, they have really long tusks coming out and these are their teeth, which are a lot bigger than ours. Um, and so these, tusks are what's taken from the elephant and used to create different products that are then traded illegally. And unfortunately, unlike with humans, where we just lose our teeth uh, and they grow back, um, an elephant is harmed when their tusks are taken away for these products. So what are the tusks used for? They're created or they're, they're turned into jewelry, bangles, um, different figurines that you can see here on your screen. So someone will carve that great big tusk into a little product that is then sold in different parts around the world, even though it's illegal. And I'm going to give you a vocabulary word for the day that you all can see if we remember by end of the week, and this is called Schrager lines. So one really cool thing about elephant ivory is that they have these unique markings um, when you're looking at their ivory in certain images. 
so teachers, if you want to help me point out on your screen here, um, kind of the lower part of this bangle to the right, you can see some of these cross hatching lines. And so this is really unique to elephants and mammoth ivory. So if you're able to see this in a picture, you can confirm that that product comes from an elephant. So again, your vocab word of the day is Schrager lines. So not just elephants uh, that are affected by illegal wildlife trade. We have other really cool species like sea turtles here, uh, where you can see the turtle um, is kind of a stuffed animal. You might've seen this. It's not an actual stuffed animal like we all like to cuddle, um, but something a little bit different that might be on display. You may have even seen them in museums. Um, and then looking at our friend, the pangolin uh, down below, um, you'll see some of their scales that are traded, which is what aligns their body all along the, the length of their body and they use for defense. Um, and also products that are created from their skin. And then it's not just products. Uh, as we mentioned, people love to have live animals as well. Um, like these great apes here, we have an orangutan baby with some really great hair in this picture. Um, and sellers think that if they want to sell these products that are technically illegal or not allowed by law to sell, that if they sell them online, they're less likely to get caught. And also, as you may know, the internet is really, really big. Uh, so it creates a much larger marketplace for people to sell. And fortunately, this is where WWF has stepped in to help protect all of these species that are being traded. So I'm sure you've all seen your parents on their phones and computers, uh, maybe looking something up on Google or sharing uh, your adorable photos on Facebook uh, or ordering some groceries or clothes or toys from your favorite websites. So we're working with all of these websites uh, through a big coalition or a team of companies uh, that all wanna make sure that the internet is a safe space, space for wildlife. Uh, and so we help all these companies understand what species are being traded illegally, how are they being traded online, and how can they stop it? So we provide them with all the tools that they need. We help everyone know what a pangolin is. And they've all learned how to look for Schrager lines, uh, those cool cross hatching marks on elephant ivory, so that we can help them keep these species offline. Um, and so far we've protected thousands of species online. One of our really cool partners we love to talk about is eBay. Um, and in the last two years, eBay has removed 165,000 listings that involved an illegally traded wildlife product, um, which is a lot. So to kind of give you an idea of this work, here's a fun video that sums it up. Wildlife trafficking is second only to habitat loss as the biggest threat to species. Each year, over 20,000 African elephants lose their lives to the demand for ivory. Every day in South Africa, three rhinos perish at the hands of poachers for their horns. And though you might not know what a pangolin is, over 1 million have been traded in the past decade. Now wildlife traffickers are exploiting the biggest marketplace in the world, your phone. They can reach more people more anonymously than ever before through websites and apps at your fingertips. Instead of roaming the jungle, tigers are placed in online shopping carts with just a few clicks. But you can help keep tigers, elephants, and other species offline. The Coalition to End Wildlife Trafficking Online unites global tech companies to work together to keep their platforms free of endangered species. Help us by learning what to look for, avoiding illegal wildlife products, and reporting suspicious listings. Is this necklace what it seems? Or does it tell another story? Join us to find out. Okay, so on to the most important part of today. How can you all help? Uh, we wanna make sure that you not only learn about illegal wildlife trade, but that you all can play a role uh, in helping us stop it and protect your favorite species around the world. So most importantly, uh, help us spread the word about wildlife. I would love it if each and every one of you could go home today, go see your friends, your family, uh, and tell them what a pangolin is, because I, I bet you they haven't heard of one yet. Um, or tell them about your fancy word trigger lines and that it's a cool way to see if something was made from elephant ivory. And let them know that if they're online, uh, definitely not to purchase any products that were made from endangered species. And I'm sure there's someone out there that really wants an exotic pet, um, like a lizard or a snake. Uh, just make sure that if you go to get one of these animals that you're asking a lot of questions about where it came from. The first question you should ask is, was this animal bred in captivity or was it wild caught? If it was wild caught, you probably don't want it. Uh, so make sure it's captively bred. They can tell you where it's been bred, uh, maybe what generation. Uh, for that, you might get an answer like first generation or second generation or third. Uh, then you're, you're better off uh, pursuing an animal like that. 
And then just make sure that you yourself aren't buying any products that were made from endangered species. So if you go and visit a really beautiful tropical island, uh, don't bring back anything that was made from a sea turtle uh, product. It would be called tortoiseshell. So just keep an eye out for that. Also don't purchase elephant ivory, tiger claws, rhino horn, um, or any products that were made from your favorite big species. So I'm gonna leave you today, uh, or for the presentation here, uh, with another video of some elephants uh, wandering freely through a park in Asia where they belong, uh, not online, and show you how happy they are. All right, so thank you all again so much for joining us today. I'd love to take some questions, but first wanna thank you all for joining. Um, just by listening in today, you're already on your way to helping us protect wildlife species. So thank you. Thank you so much, Gia, that was awesome. I think we all learned a lot from your presentation. If you wanna go ahead and um, stop sharing your screen and just have your camera on, we can get ready for our Q&A session here. So all of you classes that are on camera, make sure to have those questions ready. And just as a reminder, for those of you that are watching off camera, um, you can submit your questions in the chat function and we'll be sure to leave those in during this session here. So for starters, um, let's start with Ms. Metzger's class and the group from Moreland Hills. Um, you guys are up first. What is your first question for Gia? How do you decide what animals need the most support from donations? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, one of the great things about working with WWF is that we have scientists all over the world. Um, so they're monitoring wildlife species every day to let us know kind of what the biggest threats are, um, what might be the most critical thing for us to work on at any given time. Um, and that's how we determine where to focus our efforts. So a great example of that is with the elephant ivory uh, that we were telling you that I just told you about. Um, elephant ivory is, is highly, highly in trade right now and elephants really, really need our help. So that's a species we've been working quite heavily on. That was a good question. Um, okay, next up, Ms. Mitchell's class. If you guys are ready, it's your turn to ask a question. My name is Gavin. How many species have been saved from animal trafficking? Oh, Gavin. I think we might have a job for you over here to help us figure that out. <laughs> I would say, how many have been saved? I don't know that I can give you the exact number because we're doing a lot of really cool work all over the world. Um, but I think I can tell you through this coalition that I told you about um, that we've been working on really for the last four or five years, I would say probably, we could say maybe 300,000 have, have probably been involved in that somehow. But that's an estimate for you. You hear that, Gavin? You may have a future job here at WWF. Um, next up is Mrs. Kudrick's class, if you guys are ready. What are other endangered species? Ooh. Hmm. I'll give you I'll give you one example. There are thousands of them. Um, but one of my favorite, I love birds. Um, I'm a big bird, uh, parrot, macaw fan. Um, so I would say an African gray parrot, if you all wanna look that up. Uh, it's a really pretty parrot that is uh, one of the most protected uh, bird species under international law. But there are thousands and thousands of birds and reptiles, um, even some bugs, some tarantulas. I'm sure some of you in there love tarantulas. <laughs> Okay, next up is Miss Tai Shu's class. Hopefully we can get our video working here. Um, you guys are ready um, whenever your, your question is up here. Uh, what's the most endangered animal at the moment? Sorry, could you repeat the second half of your question for me? What's the most endangered animal at the moment? Oh boy, the most endangered animal at the moment. 
So if we're not talking about illegal wildlife trade, um, I welcome you all to look up something called a vaquita, which is a porpoise that lives off the coast of California. Um, and they, they've been caught uh, in fishing nets uh, as bycatch or not meaning to be caught when they're catching something else. Um, and their numbers are very, very, very small right now. It's a really, uh, really big issue uh, that you can learn more about on our website. These students are throwing some hard ones your way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Miss Madden's group. If you guys are ready, it's your turn to ask a question. Why are pangolins important to the ecosystem? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm sure you all have had a science lesson where you've learned about the importance of different animals across entire food webs and across ecosystems and how they all play a really, really critical role within that ecosystem. Um, so the pangolin is no exception. Um, in Africa and Asia, they're really important. Um, they do eat lots of bugs um, and lots of grass, so not necessarily one of the bigger predators, but they're still really important for regulating that ecosystem. That's a good question. <laughs> okay, we're going to actually go to our chat right now and ask one of the questions that was put in through there and switch it up a little bit. We have a question from Aiden in Naperville, Illinois. He wants to know, do you know how many endangered species are traded in one year? Whew. Again, we've got another job for someone to help us quantify that. That's a big challenge. Um, I'm just gonna throw out a ballpark. We're gonna say thousands and thousands, though I can't give you an exact number. And one of the reasons we can't give you an exact number um, is because that big word that was tacked onto this talk, illegal. Um, so because it's illegal to trade these things, um, you don't have all of the products right in front of you to count or all of the species to count. Um, so a lot of this stuff is sneakily happening either online um, or behind closed doors. So we can't really count it or quantify how many are being traded. Okay, great. Um, let's go to the Helping Ninjas with Miss Barry, if you guys are ready. Are zoos good or bad for animals? Another great question. Um, so a lot of zoos are really important for conservation um, when they have a strong conservation goal behind what they're doing. Um, so if a species uh, is having a hard time living in the wild by itself, either because of this illegal wildlife trade or because of other threats, uh, maybe like climate change or um, habitat loss, um, then sometimes zoos are really important for helping to regenerate and repopulate that species so they can be released back into the wild. And of course, it's really important for you all to be able to see the, to see wildlife in zoos so that you can you know, learn to love them and save them like we do. Okay, that was a great first round of questions. If you guys want to get ready for our second round here, um, we're going to start back up with Ms. Metzger's group again from Moreland Hills. What endangered animals live in Northeast Ohio and what can we do to protect them? Oh, endangered species in Northeast Ohio. That's a great question. Um, hmm. Have you all seen any kind of bears or wild cats? Maybe some coyotes or wolves? No, I'm seeing some nods, some yes. <laughs> so we have a lot of species here in the US that are facing um, some habitat loss. Uh, maybe the more as your neighborhoods and your shopping malls and everything continue to grow and expand, um, all of those species have smaller and smaller habitats to live in. Uh, so it's really important to just be aware of wildlife around you, um, share the trails, share wild spaces with them because it is still their home too. Very good. Um, next up is Miss Mitchell's class. Hi, my name is Sincere, and are there any laws protecting animals who are currently in captivity? Um, that's a great question. I don't know about laws protecting animals in captivity. Um, there are specific guidelines. So if animals are in captivity at, at a zoo, um, there's something called um, an AZA accreditation. You can all look up. Uh, which basically is just a set of, of guidelines and rules for how to take care of animals that are in those facilities. Make sure they're getting uh, the love and the resources that they need. Um, and then there are laws in the United States about some pets that can and cannot be kept um, in captivity. But again, that'll align with uh, species that are endangered or not. 
And so you all can look up uh, the Endangered Species Act, which is our law here in the United States. That'll let you know what some of those species are. Thank Good you. Good question. You're welcome. Okay, uh, next up is Mrs. Kudrick's class. Um, what's the most um, endangered species that's traded online um, underwater, like underwater, no, underwater animals? Well, so the sea turtle is a good one because uh, they, they don't necessarily, they can come above and below. Um, but sea turtle is a big product that you'll see online. Um, and they're traded not just for their shells as tortoiseshell, but also as leathers. Um, particularly here in the U.S., you do, we do see a lot of um, sea turtle cowboy boots traded online. So that's one uh, that is very much unique to the United States. It was another really good question. Okay, Miss Tie Shoes class, you guys are up next. I think there may have been a, a little lag. Could you repeat your question for me? Why do we all as humans grow out of a product? Oh, sorry, maybe one more time. It might be my audio. Why do we why do we humans sell animal products? Why do we humans want animal products? No. Oh, sell. So that's a good question. Um, so because there are people who want to buy animal products. Um, unfortunately, they are sold for a lot of money. Um, so some people might sell the products because they are worth so much money. Um, and it could be that um, they're a criminal and they know that it's wrong to sell um, the animal and they want to make all of that money. They could be someone who maybe they don't know that what they have. Um, like maybe you have a piece um, of elephant ivory that your great, great, great grandmother handed down to you as an antique. And you don't really know that it's illegal or that it came from an elephant. Um, it just looks like a pretty carving. So sometimes people don't really know um, that what they're selling is illegal. Okay, I'm gonna jump in here and revisit our chat again, Gia, if that's okay. Um, we've got some students from Chesterbrook that kind of have a three-part question for you here. Um, <laughs> number one is why do people poach animals? Number two is if you know about how many sea turtles are left in the world. And the third part of the question is how are plants impacted by wildlife trade and how can we help? It's a, it's a doozy for you. It is, they're good questions though, <laughs> thank you. Um, so why are animals poached? So kind of going back to sort of the question we just answered before, um, sometimes they are poached because they are worth a lot of money um, to other buyers and people wanna just sell them and get a lot of money um, if they are criminals. They might also um, need to sell illegal products because of um, it's a means, just a livelihood for them. So it might just be the only way that they have to make money. Um, so it would kind of be one of those two things. I don't think that anyone directly wants to poach an animal, uh, especially some of the beautiful ones that we showed you today. How many sea turtles are left? That is a great question that I actually don't know off the top of my head, but I'm more than happy to check in with our Latin America colleagues and share a number back with you all after the live stream today. And plants, yes, we didn't mention plants today, but they are also included in illegal wildlife trade. So that illegal law that I told you all about that includes thousands of different animal species also includes plant species. Um, so one example I can give is of orchids. Um, there is an illegal trade in orchids that you might not know about. Um, so if you wanna buy one of those beautiful uh, plants for your, for maybe for your family um, or as a gift for someone, just kind of know where those plants are coming from. Okay, great. Yeah, that was awesome that we brought up plants. Um, next group that we'll go back to here is Ms. Madden's class. If you guys are ready for your next question for Gia. How are baby animals affected if their parents are poached? That is a great question. Um, so there are a lot of sanctuaries um, or offices that might um, um, that might be able to take those animals in um, and help rehabilitate them, get them used to living on their own without their parent, um, and then can release them into the wild. Uh, though there are some that might not be able to live um, in the wild on their own, so then they would stay in those sanctuaries. But the goal is to always uh, rehabilitate those animals and then get them back into the wild. 
Okay, that's another good question here. Um, helping ninjas, if you guys are ready, you're up next. With all the damage that we've caused by hunting and selling parts of these animals online, will, will it ever be able to be, be reversed, the damage that we've caused? That is an excellent question. Will we be able to reverse it? Well, you can never get back the species that have already been lost and been traded, um, but we can help completely shut down the internet as a way for these animals to be traded. Um, so if we're taking away one of the major markets and major routes that sellers are using uh, for these products, then they don't have a way to sell them anymore. Um, so then there'll be less value maybe for those animals to be poached in the first place if it's harder and harder to sell them. Um, so our, our ultimate goal is that it's so hard to sell these products um, that they're no longer being poached or trafficked, and then they have time to recover in the wild. Okay, great. I think we actually have time for one more quick round of questions. So if our classes here want to select their last good question for Gia, we'll start back up with Ms. Metzger's group from Moreland Hills. We're doing a project about endangered animals and we want to know how our school can take action. Good question. I love it. Action motivated. Um, so like we said, number one thing, go and tell everyone about this issue, um, about wildlife, how they're being traded, uh, and make sure that no one is buying endangered wildlife products. Um, and that if, if any of you all want to get a live exotic pet, uh, make sure you know where it came from. Ask lots of questions about how it was bred. Uh, and don't bring home anything that you might find uh, out on vacation. Don't, don't sneak any animals back home in your bags. Yeah, that would not be a good thing, right? Miss <laughs> um, Mitchell's group, last question. Hi, my name is Julia. What are some alternatives for ivory? Ooh, alternatives for ivory. This is a great, great question. Um, so we see a lot of lookalike products that are made from plastic um, or bone, like maybe like a cattle bone um, that was harvested sustainably. Um, so you can see a lot of things that are, are carved kind of in the same way into those products. Another one you can look up online when we're done here, it's called Tagua Nut, uh, T-A-G-U-A Nut. Um, so it's a type of nut um, known as vegetable ivory. So when you carve it, it has the same kind of look, um, but it's not being made from an animal. Very good question. Mrs. Kudrick's class, your last question for Gia. What's your favorite part of your job? <laughs> my favorite part of my job, is that the question? Yeah, um, I think my favorite part of this job is I get to work with really, really cool scientists across the world. Um, so kind of like you all are hearing from me today, um, I get to hear uh, about the work of my colleagues all over the world every single day. So I'm always learning something new um, and always discovering kind of new species that we're working with, which is really great to see. Okay, uh, Ms. Taishu's class, your last question. Sorry, could you repeat that for me? There was a slight delay. Can we stop people from killing elephants and rhinos? Is that the question? Yes, um, so that's what WF's working to do. So I work, um, the work we've been talking about today is kind of looking at illegal wildlife trade. So once the animal's already been poached, uh, but we have, we do a lot of work that looks at stopping the animal from being poached in the beginning uh, to begin with. And so one of the ways that we do that um, is helping with demand. So understanding why do people want products made from those animals uh, and how can we help kind of change their mind so that they don't want those products. Um, and then also just make it really hard for sellers to sell those products. Um, so if we shut down illegal wildlife trade on the internet, it's a lot harder for someone to sell that product. So they're less likely to poach that animal. Okay, um, let's keep going with our classes that are on camera and then we'll, we'll wrap up with the last couple ones from the chat here. So next up is Miss Madden's group. How many elephants have you saved? Ooh. Again, another tough question. I would love to say about, you know, 
500,000 we've saved directly, but I don't know that we can put that number on it. Um, I think if we just share, um, earlier someone asked about species online. If we say we've protected maybe 300,000 species online or individual animals, um, that a really big portion of those would have been from elephants. Okay, and our last group on camera here are helping ninjas from Indiana. Your last question for Gia. Um, how much money do you guys raise in a year for animals? Whew. Another great question that I myself don't know the answer to, but we're happy to come back to your teachers after uh, this session with, a, with some information for you. <laughs> A lot of your questions today you have been very number based. They're really quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got a few last questions here from the chat. Um, we have a question from Terry that says, what is the most endangered species? First of all, you may have already kind of touched on that. And then the second part of their question is, if I find an illegal product, is there a preferred authority to notify? Who do we call? That's a great question. That is a great question. Um, so most endangered species, again, this is, the, this is a tough one because there are just so many um, species that are protected. Um, some of the really, really big ones that we work on here at WF, um, we have elephants, rhinos, uh, tigers, pangolins, sea turtles. These animals are all traded online as well. Um, and then what to do if you find it. Uh, so most importantly, grab a teacher, a parent, uh, an adult with you that can help you report it. Um, a lot of the company websites, um, if you're seeing something online, they have a way you can report directly on their website, which is great. Um, just make sure it's your parent or someone over 18 that's doing that. Um, and in the United States, if there's an animal you want to report that maybe is not on the internet, um, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service um, is our national uh, enforcement branch here that you'll want to reach out to. And each state has their own Fish and Wildlife Service representative that you can contact. And we're happy to share a link and more information on that to your teachers. Okay, so kind of on that note as well, our last question in the chat here is from Zoo New England that says, is there a website that kids can check out to see images of the types of items to avoid buying? Absolutely. Um, so our coalition has a website. Um, it is endwildlifetraffickingonline.org that you can go to. Um, and we have some examples of the different species and what the associated products look like. Um, and we also have some more information on WWF's website, uh, worldwildlifefund.org, that you can check out. Great. Well, that was awesome. You guys asked a ton of great questions today. So really good job. I think we are running out of time here. So if you still have questions that didn't get covered today, you can tell your teacher to email them to wildclassroom at wwfus.org. And we can be sure to pass those along to Gia and get some answers back to you. So Gia, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. And I think we all learned a lot from your presentation. So what we're going to do now is unmute everybody's microphone to give everyone the chance to say thank you. <laughs> so can we say a big, big thanks to Gia, guys? Thank you.